It's Captain Matt, Boater's Secret Weapon, and today we're talking deck boats. I went to the boat show and I reviewed every single deck boat I could at four different boat shows. I'm going to give you in this uh, video, I'm going to give you my evaluation uh, and ranking of each of those deck boats. So you see, these are manufacturers that built deck boats that I could find back to about 2000 or so. So there was 28 manufacturers, most of them back in the day. We're building stern drives, um, some of them doing outboards. Then you move forward. The ones in yellow have gone out of business. They're not building deck boats or any boats anymore. Harris Kayat is the one exception. They've kind of turned into Harris pontoons bought by Brunswick, and they're 100% pontoons now. The blue ones are still building boats, but no longer building a deck boat option, okay? So that leaves us with 15 fiberglass, stern drive, and outboard deck boats, okay? So these are the people that are building deck boats now. Um, I say fiberglass, but we've actually got two that are not fiberglass, and we'll talk about those, but I included them in this because the number was so small. Now, some of these manufacturers, you can see how I ranked them, and you can see I've got Nautic Star kind of, I wasn't sure where to place them. We'll talk about that in just a little bit, but I went ahead and I'm going to rank them in their tiers and we'll go through some of them. I was not able to inspect. They weren't at the boat shows, which tells me a couple of things. And I'll talk about it when we get to those brands. So stick to the end. If you've got questions, throw the questions in the comments and I'll, I'll try to come back and answer those. So in the premium category, there's really, in my opinion, only one premium deck boat manufacturer, and that is uh, Sea Ray. So if you look, the Sea Ray SDX, the, the 270 SDX, you know, this boat was 156,000 um, MSRP uh, without the trailer. Um, somehow it was 158,000 for the sales price. Um, oh, no, there we go. The MSRP is 178,000. The actual boat show price was 156. So we're talking, it's a, it's a different level um, of deck boats and Chaparral. Cobalt, uh, Regal, they all got out of this business. Sea Ray is the only one that that continues in it. I, I've done reviews of Sea Ray and just the quality that you get on the SDX, the deck boat series, and the SLX, the bow rider series. And I've done a, a full video on all the bow rider manufacturers as well that you can check out. Uh, but you've just got the thickness of the cushions, the durability and the thickness of the upholstery. The stainless steel, every every fitting is stainless steel. The cup holders are stainless steel. They're not cheaping out and using a you know a, a 306 stainless. They're actually using a 316th stainless, which is a, a more resistant to rust stainless steel. Um, <clears throat> they're not using aluminum instead of stainless in most in most cases. It's just those little things, the thickness, the durability of the uh, of the build. So if you want a deck boat in premium, Sea Ray is really one of the only games in town now. In the mid-tier, these are the manufacturers that are, are building. And again, Nautic Star is, um, they were kind of on that bubble for me. And um, so we'll start with Crown Line, just in alphabetical order. Their E-Series are their deck boats. The EX series are the no windshield boats. So you can see they make them from 20 foot up to 30 foot. Um, as well as the other models that they have. If you haven't watched the bow rider versus deck boat video, the difference is the deck boat, it comes wide on the bow versus going to that sharp, narrow point. It's really a matter of looks. Functionality, they function very, very similar. So as we look to the crown line, they've got the EX, the no windshield. They also offer that as a fishing model. You can put fishing seats on it. Uh, depending on uh, on how you want your boat set up. But uh, two different ways to do a deck boat, but essentially just a big open area. Now, as I was going through the crown lines, I, I really like the crown line. My family has owned multiple crown lines before the new ownership. So before 08, 07, 08, I don't remember when they, when they closed down for a while. And then the new ownership, which was really the old employee group. So it's it's the same people. It, to me, it's the same DNA. But the crown lines, you know, if you look, nice stitching, a nice clean helm. Um, you've got the little armrest for your throttle, which is, it, to me, it's a little thing, but it makes a big difference in just the comfortability when you're cruising. But if you look, the nice stitching, it's not the best, but it's really good. Nice heavy-duty um, hinges on the uh, on the cushions up in the bow, you know, a nice stainless steel strut for the ski locker. 
uh, it, just a, a good looking boat, you know, a nice tailor made windshield. The, but a couple of things that put them in. This is why they're not premium in my mind. If you look in the, this is in the um, anchor locker up in the bow. These are the docking lights. These these wires are just run through and um, and attached. That's they're going to get pulled out at some point. The anchor is going to get stuck on it. A rope's going to get stuck in, and the line's going to get tangled around it, and you're going to have issues. It's not finished fiberglass. It's going to get all dirty and gross. Not a big deal, but it's it's a reason why they're in that mid tier category. Same thing in the uh, in floor ski locker. You've got your spot for your for your anchor light, which is great, but just painted fiberglass. Same thing in the battery compartment. But overall, the hardware that they're using, you know, it's it's good solid hardware, but just a couple of little things that that put them in that mid-tier category and not to that premium level. Four winds, they've got their hybrid deck boats, their HD3, 5, and 8. Um and again, you see that big wide bow. The they they didn't have any of these in the boat shows that I visited. So I've inspected four winds, uh, but they they didn't have a deck boat version, which isn't all that uncommon. You'll find that these deck boats, they just don't build them. I mean, even if you go back in the Crown Line video when uh, Kevin was talking about he's the vice president and GM, he was talking about this new fishing series. They're, they're calling this the pontoon killer. They're, they're trying to build a fiberglass boats that's less expensive than the pontoons that will keep the deck boat fiberglass market from continuing to shrink and shrink and shrink like it has been since, you know, 2010 or so when the bigger outboards started coming. He said, and, and I think this was a slight exaggeration, he said, if we were to build 100 of these style of boats, and he was talking about the 205, he said 60 or 70 of them would be have the fishing chair. So it's, it's a very common option for people to add to these boats. Now, that means they're only at most they're only building a hundred. I, I think that number is probably inflated uh, so that he can make the math easy. But you know they're just not building very many of these deck boats. And when you get to some of these manufacturers like Four Winds that aren't building a ton of boats anyway because they don't have the huge dealer network now that they're Beneteau, um, they're just not building a lot of these deck boats. They're harder to find. Inventory was short, but overall, you know, a good, nice, clean helm. You know, you've got the the lighted toggle switches, which I like. The um, you know the upholstery looks to be very nice. You've got stainless steel, or you've got big long piano hinges on this seat that flips up. This is something that I I don't like. It might be a personal pet peeve, but the ladder, when they stick out from the compartment, they're not totally enclosed. What that what why I don't like that is one for the looks. Two, if you're pulling into a tight spot and that ladder catches you're going to do some damage to your boat, but also you're going to do a lot of damage to the other boat. It's just, it's a little thing, but it's, I, I like them when they're all the way recessed. I understand why they can't do it in some situations. It gives you worse access to the anchor locker, or you, you don't have as much space to tuck it all the way back in. Uh, you're giving up too much space in that situation. But if you look at the hardware, you know, it, it's good, but it's not super heavy duty. You know, this this little latch, it's okay. You've got a little plastic grab handle there. It, it puts it in the mid tier category. You don't have the you don't have the real ledge to rest your arm for the throttle. But again, it's a little thing, but it's why it puts it in the in that category. Now, Glastron, another Beneteau um, manufacturer, they've got their GTD and their GTD Surf. So. They have actually just redesigned their deck boats uh, in the last handful of years. They, they do different models every year. Um, but, you know, a nice wide bow again, that's the deck boat. On the larger ones, they actually have a side walkthrough in the windshield versus the center walkthrough. And you can see it on this one a little bit where they've got their the seating all the way around. And because they've got the side windshield walkthrough on the larger models, they've got a dual helm seat. They also, I really like this, they've got dual ladders. On both sides, they have a ladder going down. And it comes in handy when you're tied up to the dock or you're tied up to another boat. And there's one of the sides isn't easy to get to. Um, it, I, I thought that was a, a nice little thing. But again the little things that put them in the mid tier. And I would say that uh, they're different than the four winds boats for sure. Even though they're, they're the same parent manufacturer um, they are different and you can see that in the layouts, but you know, a, a plastic covering to get access to under the seat, a, a premium manufacturer would use a, you know, a, a closed molded uh, small part, which is fiberglass and it would be custom made for that. This is more of just an aftermarket um, uh, 
what do you want to say, uh, hatch. That's going to get you in there. Not bad, but it's going to discolor over time. It's going to not, it looks, uh, doesn't integrate as well. This is one of the things that they put in in the new design of this um, deck boat is kind of this little walkthrough area. So it's a it's cut out. Practically, it makes a lot of sense. If you're getting off on a side dock, if you put the port side on, you have an easier step off. You don't have to step up and over. Um, but it does, it makes the look of the boat on the, the um, profile a little different you can see they're carpeting some of the areas in the um in the uh, bow and then this is a seat i talked about it, it, it's a flip-flop seat on the um the port side but if you can see how that upholstery is wearing on that hinge my concern is that you know over five years that back and forth of of uh flipping there it, it's going to start wearing that out that's a a pretty good wear point that um that i think could be causing some problems so i put them in the mid category as well low and you see i've got them starred this is the sd224 side console so the only way to make one size but this is actually an aluminum boat it looks like it's fiberglass they paint that aluminum it looks like fiberglass and we've got another model that looks similar or no, another brand that looks similar to this, which we're talking about. But I see this as more, hey, we really want to do it all, but we really are into the fishing uh, and doing it aluminum. You know, you get slightly a more, I'll, I'll say durable boat that if you get up in the rocks or into some shallows, you're not as concerned. Um, you know, of course, you don't want to scratch your boat all up, but it's it seems less of an issue on the aluminum builds than if you're looking at fiberglass. Again, I wasn't able to inspect this boat in person, unfortunately, but they're building this 22-foot deck boat and starting at 45,000, you know, with a 115. So it's not going to be super speedy, but that aluminum is much lighter than the fiberglass and the the layout of fishing, you know, it, I wanted to throw that in there for, for people that were considering it. Nautic Star, um, again, I'm going to do the Nautic Star in the mid-tier, and we'll talk about the back and forth, but they've got their, their 193, 203, SC, their 203 DC, 223, 243 DC. That's dual console and side console. So it just depends on our center console and side co on dual console just depends on are they putting the, the steering column and the helm in the center of the boat like a center console, but still making it a deck boat, which is interesting. Nobody else is doing that. Or are they doing it a more traditional like this one here? Um, I, I've inspected Nautic Stars in person, but again, I wasn't able to inspect the deck boat Nautic Stars. I've only inspected the center console. Um, but if you look at these boats, they, they're they nice, but some of the little details, the the level and the thickness of the fiberglass and the lamination schedule, the when you start to look in the compartments, you just see they're... they're they're really keeping the price down on these boats. You can see the plastic little um, compartment there up in the bow. Again, it, it's not the worst thing, but it's just not the quality way to do it. The upholstery, not as thick as you'll find in some of the other the other brands. The stitching, not as solid as you'll find in the other brands. But it really comes down to just the, the details um, and the thickness and the quality of the build for, for them. I want to add this in here. Just after I finished recording this video, I got the notification that Mastercraft actually sold to Nautic Star to Iconic Marine. So Mastercraft had bought Nautic Star uh, a couple years ago and really from the the comments in the industry ran it into the ground. They did a poor job of keeping up the quality of the name. Um, and, and so they've to, and this is amazing right now. They sold it uh, to iconic Marine. The one of the most uh, high demand times in the industry. And, and they've now sold this brand. So it would be interesting. Iconic Marine has a uh, fountain Baja and Donzi. So it'd be interesting to see how they, they, fold this into the mix it says that they're going to leave it running as an individual um as everything going right now but hopefully they come in make some improvements to the quality and the way the brand is run and hopefully uh in the coming years we'll see nautic star move up into uh the a clear mid-tier boat where they where that brand has been in the past playcraft now playcraft is a pontoon manufacturer but they also have their deck cruiser and their sunfish this is a, a small manufacturer out of Missouri. They only have a handful of manufacturers or dealers, I would say less than 20. Um, but Playcraft is a, a brand I know down at the Lake of the Ozarks. They're a brand about speed, about performance. Um, 
and I didn't realize that they made these fiberglass versions. I've never seen them. You can see this is the, the deck. This is the fish. This looks a lot like a hurricane deck boat from the fun decks back in the day. I know about Playcraft's quality. They build a nice, solid boat. The reason I put them in the mid-tier is because of the brand recognition. The resale value on these boats is going to be a little bit more difficult because unless you're in the little pocket that no Playcraft they're going to be a little more difficult to sell the fiberglass version. If it was the pontoon version, I wouldn't have the same concern, but it's, it's just a different style boat. And, um, and that's why they go in the mid mid tier category. Plus I haven't had the chance to board those and inspect them the way I would like to the Prince craft, another one of those aluminum deck boats. That's kind of the fishing. Now the, this is the version that's got two fishing seats. They also make a version that has four where you lose the sun pad. It's a little more open in the back. Again, just like that low, it's aluminum. It's it's painted aluminum. It looks like it's probably fiberglass, but you got the rails on it, um, and, and it's a, a more durable boat. Again, this Princecraft, they're a Brunswick company, <clears throat> but they're just not that common in my area, so I haven't had a chance to, to lay my eyes on it. But as I research it, it, it feels like it should go in that mid-tier category. I just I can't see putting it up in the premium level uh, with, with what I've seen, but also... It was, it was impressive enough not to be in the value category. Seapro. Seapro just started building a deck boat, the Citation 240 that I saw in Charleston. It's the only deck boat they build. I was really shocked to see it as a Seapro. I can't imagine why they decided to come out with this. Uh, maybe it was an old mold that they wanted to resurrect, and somebody said, hey, let's, let's start trying to get into this section. Um, I'm not sure what the case is, but it's a, it's a mid-level boat. You can see Citation by Seapro. So they didn't even... They didn't even badge at Seapro except that little bit right there. A, a traditional deck boat, you know, this was at the show, which was in the parking lot. It's real dirty, but it was, the construction was good. I inspected a ton of Seapros. You can see this whole building was filled with, or this whole tent was filled with Seapros. These are Seapros. So I inspected probably 25 Seapros. And I saw the same thing. It's a mid-tier uh, level. You've got, um, you know, a, a nice a nice helm, the plastic windshield, which is designed that, you know, you see windshield and no windshield um, deck boats, but it was, it was pretty well done. Uh, a few of the things that put it in the, that put it in the lower category were just when you started looking at the hardware, you know, you can see on the Bimini top here, you can see it's got that little pin, um, which this little metal uh, wire is always going to break uh, over time. It's a little bit harder to get it situated. Just little details like that put it in the mid category. Then we move to Splendor. Splendor is a small manufacturer out of Indiana. They actually, <coughs> they were one of the first to go with kind of a catamaran style um, in the in the deck boat line. They've got a patented little, um, it's like a little fin that sticks out in the bow about right here in between the two, we'll call them pontoons, even though they're <coughs> the, to the two hulls to soften the the hit when you're hitting a big wave. They were built as a stern drive. So they've been building them for quite a while. The great, the grandfather came up with the design. Now I believe the kids are, are building these boats. They've got an outboard version, but based on what I'm seeing, what they did is they just took the stern drive version and they slapped on a, they slapped on a swim platform and they mounted the outboard there. You can almost see that they've, they've had to, strengthen it to put the bigger outboards on may not be a big thing, but it's not the way the boat was designed. It could throw off the balance. I've never run one. I've never in, in, inspected one of these splendors, uh, but it, it's a boat that I've had questions about before. It looks like they build a reasonably nice boat. I can't imagine that they build a ton of them. So I'd be concerned about resale value in areas where there's not it's not known. And, and although they're built in Indiana, most of the dealers are down in Florida because before they started putting pontoons in saltwater, this was an awesome option. Um, it gave you the room. It gave you the, what you needed in the saltwater minus the stern drive. That's, that's not a great fit, but most of them were down in Florida. It, it looks like a well-built boat, but again, you can see instead of having, um, you know, a fiberglass hatch there, they've got a, a door that fits in, their head compartment opens in in kind of a different way. I'll show you that in a little bit. The hardware, it looks good, but it doesn't look great. You can even see the Bimini top. Anytime you see those extra straps on the back of a Bimini, um, it, it tells you, hey, they need something else to give it more um, structure and to keep it from rattling too much and um, so that you can go at speeds. The upholstery, 
pretty basic, you know, the, the stitching, I didn't have any really tight shots of the, of the stitching, but these were from their website. And I really like that. It just looked like they sent some families out, probably the owner's families out on the boat and said, Hey, we're going to do the photo shoot on these boats with you guys actually using them. And, um, I, I really like that. I, I like the kind of the, you can see their, their, um, whole design in their upholstery. That looks pretty sharp. This one must be the upgraded upholstery because you can see that extra stitching in there. Stainless steel cup holders. Um, and again, a pretty nice boat. So this is how I rank them. So in the mid tier, I go crown line, four wins, playcraft, although they're, they're kind of a different breed. Um, but with the resale value, that would be one that, hey, pay attention to it if, if you're not going to keep the boat for 15, 20 years. Glastron, Splendor, again, the same caveat with them. C Pro Citation, Nautic Star. Nautic Star could have gone in the value category in my mind, but I think because the brand is big enough, they're they're the one of the largest sellers um in uh in that kind of value mid-tier category. So they've got really good resale value and um low in Prince Craft because they were aluminum. I didn't really rate them. I, I think if that's the style, if you're gonna do more fishing on a deck boat, those could be two great options for you, but they just kind of like that playcraft. They just don't compare the same way as all the other ones. So I, I, I wanted to include them in the review, but I didn't think that it was fair to rank them because they were so different. Now let's move to the value. This is where most of the boats are sold. Most of the, the number of units are sold in the deck boat line. So you got Bayliner, Hurricane, Razor Caravel, um, Starcraft, Stingray, and Tahoe. So the Bayliner, they've got their Element and their DX, okay? The Element is clearly a, a little bit lower level of boat than that DX, but this is the Element. It's really their entry level, very, very basic. You know, if, you, if you're if you to look at the upholstery on them, you know, the cushions are, are really thin compared to the mid-tier and, and the, especially the premium. You don't have a lot of extras. The mold is real basic, so there's no real cup holders molded in. It's just a, a, a pretty basic interior, which... Hey, that's what value's all about. Let's get you the most boat for the money and let's leave out those little details that are going to cost extra, but don't necessarily lead to you having a ton more uh, enjoyment in the boat. This is one of the DXs, the helm, which is different than the element, which you can see is, is just real, real basic. Um, but, you know, a, a value helm, you don't see a lot of stuff. You've got some nice toggle switches, although they're the the more value style. You can feel it when you when you flip them. They just don't have that quality feel to them. It's things you can feel when you open hatches and latches and flip switches and move seat hinges uh, and, and compartments. You just, you can feel quality and you can feel cheapness. You can see the windshield doesn't wrap all the way around. It's cost savings, keeps that price down. You've got just a painted interior versus a, a liner, but I'm glad they didn't use carpet. I'd prefer them do that than put carpet in that's going to get all moldy and mildewy. Carpet looks nicer on the showroom floor, but practically speaking, it's going to be a problem down the line. Um, they do have, these aren't hinged seats, which means if you're towing the boat, hey, you got to take those cushions out because they're likely to blow out, even though they have these little plastic pieces, which are designed to keep it locked in when you're cruising. But if you're going down the interstate at 70, that cushion's likely to get lost. You can see the stitching. Again, I really pay attention to the stitching when I'm evaluating boats. This one, it's already worn. You know, who knows what happened? Maybe there was something sitting up against it, but a brand new boat at the boat show and you see the stitching worn. You can see it's just, it's not as tight. It's not as, as, um, precise as you'll find in the mid tier and especially the premium level. That's something you can look at. Usually when I look at stitching, I'll put my fingers on it and kind of try to pull it apart. How much does it pull? How much, um, how, how much give is there? This is the element helm. And again, those switches, just a, a little bit cheaper version and, and just a real basic, basic boat. You can see also on the Bimini, this is a plastic fitting versus on the mid tier you were seeing stainless steel. I think I pointed that out on one of them. Plastic cup holder on on again. This is the element uh, helm. The Hurricane deck boats. They've got the Sun decks, the Sun deck sport, and the Fun deck. They've got their center consoles as well. But Hurricane's been building deck boats for a long time. This is a a mold that I can't tell you when the last time they updated it. They've just they've built something good and uh, they've stuck with it. And uh, it's in that value level. Again, that's what you would expect from a value brand is, hey, we don't need to refresh it. We want to keep costs down so people can get into more boat, less money. So it's a, a nice looking boat. I think the lines are, are pretty basic, uh, but looks good. Again, when you look at the hardware, it's just smaller. 
it's it's not as it's not as heavy duty the cleats the the um latches the I've talked about the stainless steel and the bimini top you can see it's already frayed on this little wire that that wire is always breaks even it doesn't matter how long you have the boat you get to a boat that's 10 years old it is that's going to be doesn't matter how well you take care of it that wire is going to be that wire is going to get broken at some point and it's just it's harder to get everything lined up when you're putting the bimini on and off and again this is kind of a, a starboard um piece not fiberglass a cheaper way to do things easier way to do things when you start seeing splatter paint inside the inside the uh, compartments the battery compartment the um i think one of these was the ski locker one of them was the anchor locker you can see this cut you know they, they cut the fiberglass but they miscut it and just n didn't even come back and clean it up little details like that put it in the value category the other reason they do the splatter paint is it hides the imperfections so it hides the dirt which is okay but it also hides the imperfections you can see the fiberglass kind of sticking out here you're gonna get a shard in your finger potentially and it just hides those little details again the straps coming back on the bimini because that bimini is not as durable, uh, just like we showed on the, the previous one. Again, you can see the splatter paint. You can see the uh, gas assist strut. It's not super heavy duty. Um, you can see the the um, plastic cover over the anchor locker. At least this one's fairly recessed. I think it's all the way recessed. Otherwise, I would have taken a picture of it. Um, and, and they've got the... Um, uh, they've got the little bollard for the, the anchor road to run through there, which is nice. Uh, not something you typically would see the cushions real basic in the stitching. You can see not super thick, a plastic or a rubber grab handle here, not stainless steel. That's going to get all moldy and mildewy over, you know, five, seven years, no matter how good you take care of it. It's just, it, it's just going to get dirt and grime on it and start to get uh, kind of a black color and a basic helm. Again, these are all things that they're not a huge deal. Um, they allow you to get a 24 foot boat, um, and, and which may be more valuable than having stainless steel ever, but maybe more valuable than having a, a fiberglass liner for you. I just want to point these, all the things out, why I, I rated it where I did, but a lot of boat for the money with the hurricane. You can also see on the deck boat, the, the hull design, it's pretty flat, which means in rough water, it, it's, you're going to feel it. It doesn't have a lot of dead rise. Um, it, it's almost a flat bottom back here, but it also, it makes it real stable, which means that if you're just sitting at anchor and people are moving around the boat, it's not going to be rocking back and forth a ton as you would find if that V had a lot more dead rise, that angle was a lot sharper, which is going to make you do this. If it's flatter, it's, it's just going to do that. That makes, if that makes sense. Again, you can see the plastic covers on the wells here on the, um, on the ladder there, you can see the speedometer, or maybe that, that's a transducer is the wires run outside the boat on better manufacturers are going to do it through haul, but it's more expensive to do that way. Uh, just little details like that, put them in the value category, the razor, uh, by Caravel. These are, are sold in factory boats direct or something like that. Um, and again, they're a deck boat technically, but you can see it's a whole different breed. It's a fiberglass pontoon, kind of like that Playcraft. But when you inspect razors, I wasn't able to, and these guys don't very seldom go to boat shows, but I was able to inspect a couple of these that had come in on trade on a, a dealership that I know. And you just, there were places where water would collect. You just see that this is a boat designed by, in my opinion, people that are, aren't serious boaters and, and they, they went for the looks, they went for the flash. You can see it by the colors, the designs. Um, I'm not a huge fan, but construction wise, I mean, they're, they're putting a refrigerator in this smaller deck boat, which listen, if you're running your refrigerator, your battery is going to go dead over a period of time. And it, it doesn't, it doesn't even fit into the, the, um, helm you know it's not even finished off really which means that you're going to get stuff back in there it just it seemed like a they did it for the wow factor of it versus the practicality of this is going to work as a boater and and that's the same thing i saw when i was inspecting the boat in person i didn't take photos because they were trying to sell this boat and um they just let me inspect it but again the plastic access panels uh to get to things a real basic helm a old school steering wheel um, but if you, if you like the looks and the design of it, Hey, it, it does make it, it makes you look different on the water, their color schemes and all of that goes to, Hey, let's be a little bit different, but the quality and the, the actual boating practicality of didn't hit for me. Uh, the stingrays, they've got their deck boat, their 17, 182, 192, and 212. So 
the Stingrays, again, a value, a value brand, um, a, a nice looking deck boat, no windshield on this one. But when you get to the hardware, this is where you separate into the value. A little bit smaller than even that Hurricane. And, and this was even a um, kind of a stamped aluminum. Uh, same thing on the hinges, plastic on the, the spray, um, plastic housing on the spray, which means at some point this is probably going to get broken off that little that little spray nozzle. It's something that happens with value boats is when you when you start going cheaper on the hardware, it just means you're going to have issues with those down the line. You can see the the um, kind of starboard um, or a plastic cover on the ski locker. You see that throughout this little step here. Nice storage, but when you get into it, it's a little bit on the um, on the cheaper side. A single gas assist strut for your for your ski locker, um, and, and again, you can kind of see the the dirt and the grime on there which tells me that this tray isn't draining very well now again this boat was sitting outside at a boat show so it's that may be a, a unfair characteristic of, characterization of it but if you look at the upholstery not as thick the plastic um, compartment for access down to your fuel water separator and and the lines and some of the other things that you'll bilge pump um, down there as well S a little bit smaller hinges um, stitching you know not as tight as uh, you can see, this one's a that's off a little bit. Just those little those little things start adding up. And again, when you start looking at the finishing off in the compartments, these wires susceptible to being pulling out if you you know start throwing some gear in there. But look at all that raw fiberglass that's going to stab you and, and poke into your finger, uh, and just looks terrible. You know the the cuts aren't clean. This one, the cuts don't even match up with the with the um, um, deck top. So just little things like that that definitely put them in the uh, in that category. And this was the on their tower. This was the Bimini. Now I'm six two, so I'm a little bit taller. But I was really like, oh my god, I can't even stand at the helm with the Bimini top up. I mean, it came up to my eyeballs. And um, so if I was to, I couldn't take this picture at the helm because my my whole head would be hidden and I'd be sticking through that Bimini top. But if you're smaller, it's not a big deal. But if you're a taller person, maybe that isn't the Bimini top for you. Maybe you just need the regular Bimini and, and stay away from the tower. And again, when you start opening access panels, which I always do, if you start seeing raw plywood, well, uh, that's very, very susceptible to rot. Not something that uh, that you want to see. In theory, that shouldn't get wet. That access panel should should seal tight. In reality, everything on a boat gets wet at some point. StarCraft, the SVX 210, 211, 230, 231. Uh, I saw these everywhere. The StarCraft deck boats dominated the deck boats in the boat shows. You can see it was the number one selling deck boat in the U.S., um, their SVXs. The value, this one had had the price on it, 40000 for this uh, this 17-foot deck boat, uh, the 171 SVX, okay? When you start getting into it, you start seeing small gaskets around. You start seeing the the fiberglass is, you know, the where they cut it out for the compartments. You know, kind of, it, it's not even, um, it's not clean cuts. Uh, the upholstery was okay, uh, but not super, super thick and durable. The attachment points on their hatches were riveted on with these little teeny, teeny, tiny rivets. And this anchor locker, if, you, if you've been out boating, this anchor locker, when you're trying to get the ladder out, get the anchor out, you've got wind blowing it. I mean, that thing takes a beating. And I just, I was concerned that those, those little teeny rivets weren't going weren't gonna to hold up. You can see the, the small, now this is a 17 foot boat, but it was the same way on all of them. Um, this uh, little panel, nice rocker switches. I do like these rocker switches. Um, but if you look at this panel, look at how far up in the corners the screws are. First time you drop something, a can of sunscreen or, or a, a, a can of soda or whatever, that's going to chip and that's going to break. The sun breaks it down a little bit. That little corner is going to break out at some point. You can start seeing some of the caulk that they use. This is the, the most obvious area where just things don't fit together as tight and as well. Now, again, they're the number one selling by units because, hey, they can churn them all out and they're selling based on price, um, which means that, hey, they're not going to have the little details of the craftsmanship because that's going to cut into, hey, that price isn't going to be 40000 for a 17-footer. They just can't hit it. Same thing with the uh, transom. You can see they finish it off here, but they've got a big gap and it wasn't it wasn't sealed, which tells me probably if you were to take that off um, in five or ten years that you're going to have some water intrusion getting in there um, on these boats. 
plastic on the bimini top and again that little that little cable strand which which i've mentioned multiple times um the rub rail when you start i always run my hand along the rub rail uh where the the hull and the deck come together i've got a video where i talk about the construction of fiberglass boats um the better manufacturers it's going to be more precise they're they're the way they lay their fiberglass is thicker, which means it doesn't have as much give. So when they put them together, they're more precise. They fit tighter. On the the value brands, their fiberglass isn't as thick, which means it's more flexible. So as they go around and attach the top to the deck, there's more likely going to be bigger gaps because this side got kind of adjusted and tweaked a little bit, twisted a little bit, so it doesn't always fit. And this was a, a ton of caulk uh, in between the deck and the hole um, where that rub rail comes around to seal so water doesn't get up in there. You know, again, as long as you re that every couple of years as that gets dried out and um, starts forming gaps, probably not a big deal, but something to be aware of. And again, if you look at the hole design, just like the Hurricane, I think I showed the bottom of that. Same thing with the Stingray. Very flat. This is almost like the tri-haul that I grew up on, a, a 1976 Larson tri-haul. Um, but it's going to be very stable. So it's a trade-off. You know, if you're if you're on a smaller body of water, um, hey, I would take that stability. If I've got kids, I want more stable. Um, I, I'm not going to be going through really, really rough chop. And, and this will do the trick. It'll make you stable, but it'll be a, a lot rougher ride. Tahoe. Their deck boats, the 195, 221, 50, which I actually did a full review uh, because I used this boat uh, to do one of my programs. And I did a full review video, which you can find on the channel, the 2150 center console deck boat. These, you can find them at Bash Pro Shop, Cabela's, Tracker Marine is who who builds these. You know, it just it's, looks very element-like, the Bayliner. I, I don't know who started it first, uh, but just a, a very inexpensive deck boat a lot of boat for the money when you start looking at the hardware this is on the 16 footer real teeny tiny cleat um you know a smaller pop-up cleat you can see the the way their their transom is it's just it's finished off with a series of, of plastic covers again water intrusion is my concern there um the ladder sticking out the side you've got the ski tow bar is attached via this kind of kind of almost an afterthought like hey we got to put a ski tow bar on this okay let's let's make this mountain welded on and, and bolted on there very basic on the upholstery um you know thinner when i was on the i was on a 2020 that was it was a year and a half old um probably had 150 hours on it or so you were starting to see some of the tears in the upholstery and and uh, some of the wear again that rubber um grab handle here you can see the the um uh, plastic kind of starboard f flooring there. That's not fiberglass. Just those little details, which allow them to build the boat cheaper, which allow them to sell it cheaper. Little teeny tiny drains. That's another thing that I, I haven't talked about. But in all of these value brands, the drainage system to get water from in the boat, out of the boat, is a lot smaller. If you look at the premium brands, that even the mid-tier, you'll start seeing those holes are a lot bigger. Um, the the lines that they run through are, are have bigger diameter, which means they're not going to get clogged as easy by some dirt and some debris or some leaves. Not that they'll never get clogged because they almost all do at some point, but these are going to clog up real easy, real quick, and um, and, and you have to blow some air through them. Um, but you can just you can really see how tiny that drainage system is. This smaller hinge on the seat most of them you would want that piano hinge to be a full length um a full length there stamped aluminum on the on the hinges here but again a value boat it's what you'd expect so as we come through and i rank these that hurricane is in stingray are, are one two in the value line i could have done Again, Nautic Star would probably be above the Hurricane, uh, but it would be it would be right there. Hurricane Stingray potentially could have gone to the mid tier, but they just did too many things that I put them in the value. Bayliner, Tahoe, Starcraft. I was for Starcraft being the number one deck boat brand. It's all based on price, and, and from what I saw, the the construction quality, and I saw a bunch of them. I mean, they had they had ten at a single show and i went to four shows that that all of them had starcraft and then the razor by by caravel um it's just the resale value of that boat i think is going to be very very difficult it's the same thing i talk about in color that if you buy a red or a yellow or an orange boat you're gonna have a harder time reselling it because people either love it or they hate it the same thing with that razor design people are either going to love it or hate it and most people 
aren't going to love it. Um, that's that's just the the reality. Same thing with the colors and the quality of construction. The little details are put them at, at the bottom of the of the value category. So if you found that valuable, um, give it a thumbs up. The toolkit, if you're shopping for a boat, grab this free Boat Buyers Toolkit. Um, it will help you as you're going through and inspecting them because inspect them for you. How is this boat going to work for me? And that toolkit will be really valuable. Uh, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you got a question. And remember, life truly is better on a boat.